Hi, I'm Annie with Manor Farms Homestead. Today I wanted to talk to you about raising orphan puppies and or runt puppies. Um, typically we have not dealt with orphan puppies. We have had some runt puppies that we've had to supplement with milk. But most recently in our litter of nine puppies out of Max and Ruby, we had one puppy that was falling so far behind despite being supplemented with a little extra milk each day that she reached a point where she just was unable to compete with the remaining puppies. Um, a female dog has eight teats and there were nine puppies in this litter. She basically just got outcompeted and was unable to nurse. Uh, despite the small amount of supplemental milk we were giving her, she was falling way behind and reached a point where I thought I was going to lose her. So at that point, we opted to pull her out of the litter and raise her as an orphan puppy. At this point, she's doing fantastic, and I want to show you what we've done to get her to where she is today. Um, when I first pulled her out of the litter, she was three weeks old, but she was the size of a one week old puppy. So I'm gonna get Pierce to bring her around here into the camera. She's very hungry. She's trying to nurse my She's thing. ready to eat. She eats all the time. She's doing a lot of catch up growth. In the three days that we have had her in size, inside, she has about doubled inside. So this is Marin. She does need a bath. One of the things you'll find with raising orphan puppies is that the mother does an excellent job at keeping the puppies clean. So orphan puppies, they need to be stimulated to use the restroom. They tend to get chapped around their genital areas. Their skin gets a little bit dry. Um, they're just not, they, they look like they're not as well taken care of as if the mom was taking care of them. She does get a bath every day to keep her clean because she gets milk around her face, down her legs. But as you can see, she's very hungry right now. So I want to show you what we're actually feeding her in order to get her back to where she needs to be. I'm going to give her back to you. Just as you can see. The other thing that um, I did notice when we were supplementing her in the litter is that she never truly learned how to latch on to a syringe. So that made it difficult to get a large volume of milk in her. She was still very attached to her mother's nipples and did not like the plastic um, syringe. Now that we've pulled her off of mama, and we are the ones feeding her. She's very attached to her syringes and she eats very, very well. Her tummy is always full. All right, there you go. So you're gonna hang on to her and we're gonna show you what we're doing um, as a milk replacement. Now there are a lot of commercial uh, milk replacers for puppies and kittens on the market. One of your least expensive ones is going to be Pet Lack. You can get this through Amazon, any pet supply company. Um, when I was looking at the ingredients in this, though, this uh, one of the predominant sources of protein in it is soy. It does have probiotics in it. Um, it does have a good amount of fat and protein. So you're looking at 28, 29% fat and protein. So that's really good. There's no way that you can bring a orphan or runt puppy in and just start feeding them cow's milk. It doesn't have a high enough protein or fat content. They need super high fat, super uh, high protein for them to grow. So you definitely want to get a commercial based powdered um, formula for your, your orphan or root puppy to make sure that they're getting enough protein and fat. I have just recently switched from this product. This product is actually full of a different one. I'm just using this can to house it. What I'm using now is Mama Pro Nurse All. And this is a multi-species uh, milk replacer. 
This is 100% milk-based milk replacer. Um, there's no soy in this, so it is a little bit easier on the digestive system. It has a higher content of probiotics and prebiotics in it. Um, I did notice that it is a slightly bit lower in protein and fat content compared to um, what was in the pet lac. Um, again, I go back to this is a multi-species. You can give this to foals, to calves, to lambs, to alpacas. Um, it really wouldn't be cost effective because they eat a lot, but certainly it is designed also for kittens and puppies. Since it does have a slightly lower protein and fat content than the other formula that I was using, what I'm doing when I mix this up, I'm adding a little bit of amino acids and I'm adding a little bit of MCT oil. MCT oil is medium chain triglycerides. It's very easy on the tummy, very easily digestible. So um, I only mix up a small portion at a time so that it's fresh each time I feed her. I use a little container that holds really about um, two servings for her. So I'm able to feed her once refrigerate it, warm it back up one extra time, and then feed her again. She's typically eating about 15 to 18 cc's per feeding. And we just feed her each time she's hungry. So she starts screaming when she's hungry. The only time we don't get up and feed her is in the middle of the night when she screams. She just has to sleep through the night. And then she's pretty ravenous in the mornings. So I'm using the scoop that was included with this, which is, it does come down to the same mixing directions as our Mama Pro. This has a much bigger scoop and calls for uh, mixing it with a fourth a cup of water. That's way more milk than I need at one time. So I do a smaller amount. So I use one scoop of that. This is probably just over a tablespoon. I put it into my container. The one scoop will mix with two tablespoons of warm water, which is 30 cc's. So I have 20 cc's of warm water right here. And we're gonna do 10 more. I use one cc of the amino acids. You can buy amino acids through most veterinarian supply stores. This doesn't have any markings on it anymore, but I'm used to dealing with the oral syringes, so that's about one cc. I'm gonna add that into the milk. And last but not least, we're gonna put a tiny bit of our MCT oil. This is technically a fractionated coconut oil. So it's liquid at room temperature, whereas regular coconut oil is typically solid at room temperature. And then we just give this a good mix. And this puppy has completely thrived on this mixture. When we first brought her in, she was quite dehydrated. Very weak. Um, very weak. We had a very difficult time trying to give her anything orally. 
we were basically just dripping it in with an insulin syringe a little bit at a time. We spent several hours with her just slowly hydrating her. I ultimately did give her um, some sub-Q sterile normal saline because she was so dehydrated there was no way I could get an IV on her. Um, she ended up getting about 24 cc's of sub-Q sterile normal saline and absorbed it almost immediately. Um, within a few hours we did have her making urine again. We also provided her with um, electrolytes. And we went from, I wasn't sure she was gonna survive to by that night where she had made a couple of urines, was actually eager to eat. And I knew we were on an uphill swing with her. So now I'm gonna show you how we feed her, but we are gonna actually go over to her little box where I keep her and show you how I keep her warm and contained. At this age, puppies are not able to maintain their own body temperature. They're used to being in a litter where they can kind of all pile on top of each other and stay warm. In her case, she's all alone. So we keep a little um, old school, I guess they're contraband now, um, 75 watt light bulb over her to put off a little bit of heat and keep her warm. So this is the little box that we keep her in. We change out her pee pads as we need to. Um, as she soils them, we also have a little towel underneath just for cushioning. And I just put her a fresh pee pad in here because she had several little pee spots. It's always good to see pee spots so we know that she's urinating. This is an old fashioned 75 watt light bulb that are really hard to find anymore, but it puts off just enough heat not too much like a heat lamp would, but just enough heat to keep her warm and regulate her body temperature. So this is her little box. We're gonna bring her back over here. Put her back in her little home for now. And we're gonna move in and scroll down. So there she is. And we're gonna show you how she eats her milk out of a syringe. There she's eating or she's uh, drinking the milk. Okay, 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 it's coming, it's coming. There you go. She scratches the box, normally they would push on their mama and that's just her natural reflex. These are three cc syringes. I usually get them to about three and a half cc's. I fill them all the way up. Yes, it makes you very happy to eat, doesn't it? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Here we go. Open it up. There you go. Yeah. I can't just see her. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's put you back so they can see you eat. Oh, 
I go pretty slow with the syringe. I'm not trying to drown her. Here you go. Looking for more. Here it is. Here it is. Hold on. Gotta get it in there. There you go. So since we brought her in and been feeding her like this, she's doubled in size. We have had her inside since late last Friday. So tomorrow will be a week. She peed just a little bit. That's good. We want her to continue to make urine. That lets us know we're doing something right. Getting pretty close to full. We'll try one more cc of milk or one more syringe of milk. I think she's fairly full at this point. Almost full. You don't really want much more, do you? There you go. That's good. And when they're full, their little tummies are nice and round. She got a nice round tummy. And as you can see, she's kind of scrappy looking from milk and stuff. So we'll wash her again in the morning and dry her. Keep her clean. But now she's going to take a nap because she's full. That's what she does. She eats, she sleeps, and she grows. Hopefully, once she's eating puppy food, she'll be able to rejoin the litter and keep up. We just gotta make sure she catches up in size where she can keep up with the rest of the litter and rejoin them. But ultimately, I think she's gonna be a super good dog. She's gonna be definitely super attached to humans after all of her human interaction as a baby. Okay, so on part two of our video talking about orphan puppies, I've got our little Marin here. Um, she's kind of earned the nickname Pebbles at this point. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get her bathed. I do normally bathe her at least once a day just because she gets really sticky with milk and she doesn't have her mama cleaning her up. So I always try to get her a bath daily. I use a really gentle shampoo because I don't want to dry her skin out. I don't blow dry her because I don't want to dry her skin out since she's getting bathed so often. So what we're going to do is get our water warmed up um, and I'll show you what I do with bathing her. I also use a moisturizer after her bath to keep her skin soft. So at this point 
Pebbles Marin is four weeks old and she's about the size of about a two and a half week old puppy. She's gained a lot of weight over the last week of having her inside and eating good. Um, so she's doing really well at this point. She responds well. She seems bright and happy. Um, the only thing is she's a little lonely since she doesn't have her litter mates and her mom. Uh, but we just try to spend a lot of time with her during the day. I do work a lot, so my daughter spends time with her. My husband feeds her throughout the day. Um, and that's how we, we try to keep her with some company and stimulation throughout the day. So our water is warm enough. And I want it too warm. Pretty good. I'm just going to adjust our camera down so we can see what I'm doing. All right. So just a tiny bit too warm. Be careful not to get it in their noses or mouths. You don't want to drown them. But you do need to get their faces clean because that's where a lot of the excess milk goes when they dribble it down. I usually just use my fingers with a little bit of a few drops of water to get that area moistened. And then I've just got a very mild dog shampoo, puppy shampoo. I know, that's cold. That's not warm like the water was. You don't like that. It's actually a mixture of um, Bio Groom, Groom and Fresh, and a little bit of um, some coat brightening shampoo. It was a, a Jeffers product but they've discontinued that. So I can't get that anymore going forward. It was an awesome, awesome shampoo. Loved this stuff. I really like the way the Bio Groom, Groom and Fresh smells. I used that in the Bio Groom, Groom and Fresh cologne on puppies before they go to their new homes and everyone always asks what I use because it smells wonderful and it really lasts bath to bath so I mean they can stay smelling good for a couple of weeks with that. Now one of the things with puppies whose moms are not cleaning them um, their genital area needs to be washed really well. I try not to get a lot of soap in there because I don't want to burn them but they do need to be cleaned whenever I go to rinse her off I'm going to stimulate her and make sure she pees sometimes they'll poop not always but at least make sure she pees one thing I want to point out on her is she's just been fed so her tummy's nice and round she's full of milk Let our water warm back up just a little bit. You're shivering.
just really, really careful around her nose. I don't want her to get any water in there and aspirate. So now that all the soap's off of her, she's just going to rub her genital area so that she can relax and urinate if she needs to. bottom because she needs the food. And she is pooping on her own at this point as well, so I'm not going to push that issue. And that's it. She's clean for a day. You really got to hand it to mama dogs. They take such good care of their babies. They keep them clean. Some are better than others, but they really do a commendable job on taking care of these puppies the first few weeks. Now we're just going to get her wrapped up. A little rag. You about need a towel now. The rag was sufficient for you for several weeks. And I just towel dry her get the bulk of the water off of her. I don't blow dry her like I said earlier because I wash her so often I don't want to dry her out. Yeah, I know. But irritating you. You just want to take a nap, don't you? She moved up to a larger box today because she was escaping her little box which is good, good news. So she's doing really well. So now I want to show you about putting the lotion on her and a little bit of Vaseline on her bottom to keep it from getting chapped. All right, so I ran out of space on my memory card on the other camera. So I'm back in here now with my GoPro camera. The GoPro camera is such a great camera, just FYI, if you're interested in making videos. So what we're going to do, to start with, I've got some, it's Davis Oatmeal Leave-In Conditioner. It is designed for dogs and kittens. It's nice and thick and emollient, but it's not greasy. So this is what I like to use. We're gonna roll you over right now. I use this all over her tummy because her tummy gets really rough um, her paws and then I just kind of rub it into her coat to condition all of her hair and skin but I put a, a real heavy coating on her tummy Now, because she did get really malnourished, her coat is really not where it should be right now. So she's still growing in a lot of nice hair at this point. She had some patches where she had almost like scabby lesions on the skin. But those are clearing up really nicely now. So that's her leave-in conditioner. The only other thing that I do with an orphan puppy where I am the one exclusively taking care of them, where I'm taking tissue and stimulating them to urinate throughout the day, that gets kind of rough on their genital area. So I do use some Vaseline just like you would use on a baby. 
and I put just a little bit of Vaseline on the butt. We start with the little girl part and then move back to the to the butt. And that's just to keep it moist so that she doesn't get so chapped back there. And that is it for her little spa day. Now she's still damp, but what we're gonna do is put her under her light. I'm not gonna blow dry her because her light is warm enough that she will dry very quickly under there and kind of puff up and be all dog-like again. So let's go take a look at her new larger box. We're gonna probably be putting her into a little crate in the next few days, but she is still in a little box right now. All right, so this is her new box. It's much larger than what she had before. We've got a nice little pee pad in there with a towel underneath it. We're gonna go ahead and get her in here under her light so that she can stay warm. And while she's wet, she'll stay really close underneath that light. As she gets dry and warms up, she'll move off farther away from the light. So she has the ability to stay as warm as she needs to or cool off at the other end of the box if she needs to. Got my stash of pee pads right next door so that I can keep those changed out and fresh and clean for her. That's another important aspect of taking care of a orphan puppy you want them on a clean surface that helps to keeping their tummy nice and soft you don't want them wallowing around in any kind of filth so there she goes trying to find her a comfy spot she's trying to get to those towels under her pee pad she likes them better than the pee pad. So we'll probably just go ahead and tuck this pee pad in around the towel so she can't try to get up underneath it. So she's found her spot and settled in for the night. Hi guys, it is a stormy day here in Alabama. I wanted to do a final update on this video about our little runt puppy, uh, Marin. We have officially nicknamed her Pebbles. It just seemed to fit with her staying in here in the house with us. I wanna show you how big she has gotten since our last update. She has grown so much. She is now eating um, softened puppy food with her milk replacer over it to soften it and she's eating it out of the bowl she's not needing a bottle or syringe feeding at this point she's super fluffy her hair has come back in really nicely before she had had like some skin issues just from being malnourished um, and all of that has cleared up she's got a great coat beautiful markings i believe her right eye is going to be blue um, she's super cuddly very energetic gets around really good uh, neurologically seems perfectly normal she likes to snuggle she likes to eat she likes to play um, and initially i had planned on reintroducing her in with a litter but at this point um, she's really bonded with all of us in the household all of her humans um, so we're just going to keep her in here. She has moved up out of the little box that we had her in. She's got a giant crate that I'll show you back here in the back. So her setup here in the crate, she's got her pee pad area here in the front. She's got her bedding area with a light in the back to stay warm if she needs it. And we feed her in the back off of the pee pads so that she has a separate area where she eats. Let's go ahead and put you back over here. I know you're going to run right back to me. Um, but she's pretty happy in this giant crate. Uh, she snoozes a lot. She eats a lot and poops a lot. Uh, but she's a very, very happy puppy. We have decided that she is past the 
point where um, we were concerned that she might not make it. And we are planning on offering her as available. She can go with either limited or full registration. Um, I think she will always be a little bit smaller of a border collie. She's about the size of a four week old puppy right now, but um, she is five weeks old today. Let everyone see you. You're determined to get out, aren't you? Determined to get out of that crate. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically keep her with access to her uh, softened puppy chow and her milk replacer um, pretty much about eight hours out of the day um, and then a snack before bed. But she's, she's just growing, doing well, and I'm super pleased to offer this as the, the final update on this video compared to where she started off. Uh, two weeks ago. So she's a great little puppy for uh, someone who's got a soft spot for little runt puppies. Mm -hmm.